Can you kill that so, TV? Yeah. Put it down. Move this or no, 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 we're good, we're good. No, we're, we're, well, yeah, if you want to get in. Yeah. All right, America, it's your buddy Platt here, live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, I've decided enough of this lockdown thing. I'm going to enjoy a cold beer uh, with my good buddy, Jimmy, a.k.a. Jimmy Buffet. Howdy, folks. Jimmy, good to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, here, let's slide in a little bit. All right. I'm coming over. All yeah. right, so I wanted to get together with Jimmy today. Let's turn it this way. All right, we're going to turn it this way. Uh, here we go. All right. All right, so I just wanted to get together with my guy Jimmy today. Uh, need to drink beers with other people. Uh, Lord knows I drank enough by myself over the years. Uh well, anyway, we wanted to get together with Jimmy, another fellow bartender, and just talk about what's going on in Las Vegas right now, uh, the strip in general, what's going on with us bartenders, the strip. casinos, the strip. Oh, I thought you meant strip. Yep, yep. <laughs> I'll start off with a cold beer. Yes, sir. All right. Here's to you, fellas. All right, and so ladies. I want to talk about that and just uh, answer any questions you folks may have and talk about what we know about what's going on. Uh, real quick, if you're a regular viewer or whatever, uh, on this live stream, I have enabled the uh, what's called super chat and also super stickers. If you're new to that, what a super chat is or super sticker is is a way for you folks to um, support the channel, but also get your if you have a question or whatever, you know, or comment, leave them in the comment section. And uh, the super chat's a way for your question to get pegged, kind of put up top. We'll answer your question if you have a super chat. You'd be helping the channel, and we'd appreciate that. So, Jimmy, I'm just going to kind of go off real quick. If you have a hot hot uh, opinion, please jump in. <laughs> All right. Just kind of a quick update what's going on some of the uh, casinos. Uh, you'll appreciate this. What? My host at Caesars called me today. Okay. I, I need to ask him about our trip. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, we're going to Anyway, follow. my host from Caesars contacted me today and said that they were shooting for May 15th reopen. Uh, what the current status is out here right now is state uh was in a lockdown until uh april 30th and then may 1st a lot of people were kind of hoping when we'd come back um that's still kind of a state of flux but anyway uh caesars uh like some of hosts saying that caesars shooting for sometime around may 15th to start taking reservations uh mgms we know uh is, is done through may 31st they're not uh, doing anything and i've just seen i think today or yesterday Today they released that uh, no shows, so your Cirque du Soleil shows or whatever, canceled all the way through June. Through June, right. Through June now. Uh, the win is shooting for uh, Memorial Day. Uh, I believe that's what they're yep. looking at. And Treasure Island said that they're going to try to, it's on the 15th. 15th, yep, I heard but, that from Treasure Island too. And uh, the, uh, what's the one that we stayed at? This year, uh, down on the strip, uh, down off the... Uh, Downtown? Yeah, uh, the, the D, Grand. The Grand. Oh, okay. The Grand, the, and yeah, they said the 15th. I, yeah. So, we're kind of in a state of flux here. Uh, the Venetian I was reading, um, not till uh, uh, the end of the month, or May, end of May, May 31st. Oh. Uh, now, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but they've released some of their policies... Uh, part of the thing was, you know, uh, the state gaming one want to eat casino to send them, all right, well, how are you going to open, what safety procedures? And uh, and so Venetian kind of released theirs. I know Wynn has released some of theirs, yeah. too. So Venetian's going to have thermal cameras Yep. when you hit the front door. And supposedly if your temperature is 100.4 or higher, a retest, give you a retest. retest or something, you'll get pulled aside. Now, right. my quick question is, we're about to hit summertime. It's 110 outside. How's your forehead not going to be 100.4? <laughs> and um, everybody gets a mask hand. when you go um, in. Yeah, all suites are having uh, hand sanitizers, plastic gloves, and face masks in each room. I heard that. Uh, now, I noticed online it's said something about all suites. So if you're slumming in like just the regular rooms, do you not get the stuff? Or is it just for the suites? Yeah, you, you get COVID. Don't yeah. You? <laughs> uh, also, too, they're planning on having 25 medical uh 25 member medical staff 
at the casino. I think they're going to have at least that. eight of them on at a time, a rotating crew. Wow. Um, that's what's going on. Um, our Governor Sislak, I know. Governor Sissy? Sissy. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Sislak, um, supposedly tomorrow, he's going to release uh, something called the Road to Recovery or whatever, the initial yeah. plan. Supposedly, we're in phase zero, but we're supposed to be getting close to phase one. Um, that road, supposedly the road to recovery will be released tomorrow. Uh, he's also joined the western states, which is California, Oregon, stuff like that. And uh, basically he's going to follow their lead, uh, the western states deal. Those guys are all, all the other governors in the western states are all pushing back, you know, when this thing's going to open. So if he's going to follow their lead, it, it might be a while. Uh, the one thing... That supposedly is going to be announced tomorrow. What is that? They are going to supposedly lose. Oh, I didn't catch comments. Sorry about that. Um, is uh, elective surgeries? You know, if you had like, let's say, a torn ACL or whatever, you couldn't get that done. Uh, supposedly they're going to start opening that back up. Dental procedures. I'm sure there's some reason we couldn't let the dentist go to work, but uh, <laughs> dental procedures and outdoor activities. Uh, our good buddy Maddie supposedly golf, fishing. Yeah, supposedly you couldn't put your boat in the water, so uh, at least we'll get to go fishing. Get the wet line. A uh, couple more quick notes: the World Series of Poker delayed. I don't know if you heard that or not. Painful. Yep, not till sometime in the fall. You know, I was getting. I I had to admit, I was, I was telling my roommate this the other night. I was walking around. It's pretty warm out here, and some about the temperature warms up right before the World Series of Poker, and I was like, man, I'm getting the World Series of Poker time. I'm get the itch, okay. Ready to go to the Rio. People have been fishing here in PA. Oh, it's good to hear. Well, our governor out here. Well, hey, we don't have a lot of water, so there's not a lot of fishing <laughs> out here. I mean, I'm fishing for a buzz right now. Uh, but, yeah, well, I guess I guess you've been able to fish off a dock. I know one of the local, I went to Sunset Park and people were fishing there, but as far as putting your boat in, they wouldn't allow that. Yeah. Um, one more thing, a little bit of sad news. I don't know if you heard this or not. Joseph James Brewing closed one of our small microbrews in town announced yesterday they just can't make it even though they've been allowed to sell direct to the cut you know curbside pickup growler stuff like that um i don't know if you heard that or not no i didn't uh, know. it's kind of a bummer deal so jimmy what uh, what's your opinion pal <laughs> I've got I've got some beer in you. Let's. Well, what do you, what do you think about this? Where's this uh, thing going? This is the twilight zone. It's uh, every day is it, Groundhog Day, and I don't. You know, it, it's amazing that we're going through this, and we can't. You know, go back to work and. Yeah. And no. No. It's not. Hadn't been fun. Well. But our it's done wonders for our beard. <laughs> you it I. has done wonders for the beer. Yes, I. We, us and Howard Hughes were. <laughs> I it full a bit of full disclosure. First time in my adult life I've ever had a beard. I've just oh. never had a goatee before back in like the nineties yeah. when this kind of thing, but uh the handsome never, guy you are. Never you know. <laughs> I would tell you that I'm ready for a haircut. I Beards look good. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, thank you. A lot of white. Play, it's kinda of like in hockey, the playoff beard. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Until until, until we win the cup. <laughs> we'll keep growing the beard. So have you caught any you know, there's some, uh, you know, the casinos do want to get back open. Yeah. And there's all kinds of proposals on some of the safety issues. You know, they talk about, well, every employee needs to wear a mask. All right. Wear gloves. gloves. Washing. But one of the have you seen some of the mock-ups they've had on, like, how they're going to, like, partitions between slot machines or yes. partitions between. Yeah, what, what do you think about that? Table. What do you think oh, about that? God. That's crazy. I see, you know, and. It's everything's plastic this, plastic that. I mean, I don't know how you're gonna do that in the casino. That the, where if you're playing uh, video poker or you know slot machines, those are gonna be harder. You're gonna have to separate them more. Um, you know, because you want six feet. Not that we're <laughs> we're six feet apart. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> but we've been to six beers at least. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, six beers. <laughs> oh, well, but. I mean, you know, I guess they're going to sanitize the dice every roll at a crap table. Everybody's going to have gloves. My my feeling on this, and I could be wrong, I just want to say that, that I, I'm totally possible 
are capable of being wrong is if you're going to let the savages out, which is basically what we're doing when we open a casino. Who let bar. the dogs out? Why, why go through this process? Why go through that much? Uh, I, f I find it funny that we're going to go through all, all this. Well, you have the protecting, you know, the gamblers and shields and employees wearing masks. And I guarantee you, though, you get two beers or so in that guy, and he's not going to want to fall. And next thing you know, the guy's most likely in the bathroom snorting coke <laughs> off of toilet seat. Well, what the... <laughs> Thank you. I mean, the reality is, what's the point of going through all this when we know this guy's going to take, you know, guy or gal, hook up with somebody up in the room and do nasty stuff up there? What's the point of me keeping that bar spotless or anything else, you know, part of the problem with reopening Vegas is people come out here to like act like animals sometimes. That's, what, loose. that's what we do out here. So, you know, we've seen, you've seen a lot. Yeah. The, I wonder how it's going to come back. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. So, um, I will, I'd say this. So I, I think, the casinos, I, I know the casinos, some of the casinos, some businesses are sending out uh, inf or, uh, polls, informal polls, stuff like that, want to get feedback on how should we open, what's the procedures, what would you tolerate, because that's part of the thing. Um, I recently got something from my gym, and they're asked, well, you know, do you want us to require everybody to wear a mask to come in? Do you want us to turn off every other, you know, treadmill so there's always one in? Everything. Do you want us to stop the classes? Do you guys like living in Vegas? Hell yeah, I like living Love in Vegas. It. I've had a lot of fun in this town. If they only had an ocean here, I'd never leave. Oh, <laughs> boy, they had a... <laughs> Lake Mead doesn't do it No, for Lake Mead doesn't cut it. No, Vegas is a fun town. It's, it, I, it should be illegal for the amount of fun I've had in this town. Yeah. And a lot of it was legal fun. That's the best part. Like, it wasn't illegal for, to have the kind of fun I was having, which was kind of nice. Oh, Downtown. Downtown, yes. So what, that's another thing you kind of remind me. So yeah. I don't know if you've heard, been listening to Governor lately, but... No, the try, not, try not to. Uh, I'll drive you to drinking. Yeah. Um, the governor has kind of implied that, well, we're going to open so slowly. It's like a 47-phase plan or whatever, you know. We, uh, we're like nail in. salons are phase 13 and like casinos are nail or like phase 45 or something like that in, in, in and these bars it. are like never yeah uh but anyway he kind of implied the governor's kind of implied well we might open up you know some local joints and some local restaurants then maybe eventually the local casinos and then maybe down, but that the strip would be last. So we just can't do the strip. We just can't open that up. What What's your uh, hot sports opinion on that? Well, I don't know. I heard, I mean, Aria might not even open until the first of next year. That's. I mean, as one. I mean, I, I mean, you know, you hear yeah. all kinds of things, but. Yeah. It's just, I mean, we're going to be one of the first ones in Bellagio, but um, if they, Aria is not going to open until the first of the year. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting decision these companies got to go to is are you going to keep five casinos open at 10 to 15 percent or one open at 75 percent or why, you know, it, it's interesting to see. And if you're again, Caesar's Palace, but Caesar's Entertainment, so I will throw you in Planet Hollywood instead. Are you, are you going to want to go? Uh, no, I don't like Aria. I mean, no offense against Aria. I just don't feel comfortable in that casino. Yeah. I don't. I'd, I'd rather... I think our casino is, you know, really a comfortable casino. Uh, you know, some of the other ones I don't mind. But Aria, to me, is like... I get, just... I don't get the vibe. Yeah. Now, what do you... Uh, I get your opinion on something my, my casino host when he... Uh, to be coming out. And that... And I got I get a kind of feeling though that they will be semi aggressive in in the comps and hey we're gonna give you free, free rooms we're gonna give you you know this, this that, and the other um, I know supposedly in the MGM survey they sent out that they kind of hinted well what do you guys feel about free parking again um, even though I'm not sure if you think about especially the high end guests they don't park anyway parking's kind of a California thing or local thing but. 
Yeah. What do you think? Oh, I got. I think I. I got somebody's card that I can get. Oh, in, uh, <laughs> that I can get into for free. Yeah. We, won't, we won't talk about it. No, but it, it, I think they need to start relaxing some of that and even like resort fees. I mean, yeah. that's a ridiculous uh, charge. Well, you know the point behind it, though, right? You know why they do it? Because they can. <laughs> well, part of the rub, this little uh, inside baseball for you guys out there, you, especially the Vegas casinos, but it's pretty much everywhere now. The resort fee, a lot of people are like, why is the resort fee that gouge me this, that, and the other? Right. Part of the problem, what the casinos run into, and uh, is actually, uh, I want to say it was Derek Stevens of the D, and I was explaining this one time. Part of the problem is when you go online, let's say you go to Orbitz, Expedia, or you're looking for a room in Vegas. Let's say downtown. We'll use downtown as a good example. Right. And you, you look downtown, you're like, hey, I just need a room and look for the cheapest rate. And you see the D at 75 bucks a night, but you see the Four Queens at 65 You're like, well, fine, I'll stay at the Four Queens. Now, what the happening was Four Queens had a $15 Resort fee where the D didn't, but you just saw that it was cheaper and you just signed up. It's not until you get to the end of the process at Expedia and Orbitz that you see the final price, but you already kind of made the purchase decision. And what he was saying at the time, he, I think he was the last downtown not to do the resort fee, and he was like, I'm getting killed. And a couple of the other smaller casino operators in town tried to fight it, but again, when you went online, it appeared those other hotels were cheaper. They kind of had to fall in line. Also, too, from what I gather, the way Expedia and Orbitz and all those charge the casinos is based on your, your fare. You have to pay them like 8% or whatever. So let's say you went to Treasure Island. They were charging 100 bucks for that night. $8 of that then goes to Orbitz or Expedia. But the resort fee, none of that goes to them. So if you could, then let's say, if you're Treasure Island, charge eighty bucks, but then a twenty dollar resort fee, you're getting your hundred dollars, but you're only paying eight percent of the eighty dollars, not the hundred total. So from I gathered, that's part of the motivation too. I still don't like it. No, 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 I don't I like. Mean, I mean, like you, it, it's kind of like reading your cell phone bell. Yeah, the it, it's like eight hundred lines of fee. Like, what's the bill? I don't. What? Just tell me what to pay. The wind got rid of their parking fee, and you know they, the Venetian hasn't had them. Yeah, they, they and a lot more people per. They'll just get, they're locals that'll go there. I'm not gonna pay the yeah. ten, fifteen bucks to park or whatever it is. So I don't blame them, but it's too many. I call them UTA charges. Up the, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. So what else? What what uh, what information you got on on the street? What what's your uh, what's the word? What's the word on the street? <laughs> there uh, there hasn't been much. There's tumbleweeds going down oh. going down the strip that I I can't understand. And every day, like I said, it's just horrible. We need to open back up. We need to get this thing cranked up and get people's lives back together and and jobs and you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so what, so what are you what are you looking for? Uh, from your employer when you get back to source, any safety concerns you have or what, what are you hoping they would do? Or No, I think that we're gonna, they're going to probably make us wear gloves and masks and, and, you know, everything is sanitized and, you know, wipe this down, wash it, or keep washing your hands, you know, all the time. But we do that anyway. But, I mean, to get to a Friday and Saturday night, when you got people coming in and wanting to be elbow to elbow and hugging and high fiving and kissing and blowing smoke, I don't see that uh, right now. I don't know how you're going to get back to that, at least in the beginning or, or until there's, you know, something, a, a vaccine or an yeah. antidote. So if they opened a day, would you go to a bar? The governor says, you know what, screw this, let's open up tomorrow. Would you go to a bar tomorrow, your local water and hole? Yeah, probably. <laughs> now, would you wear a mask to go? Uh, I'm wearing a mask to go to the grocery store because they're saying that's what we need to do here. And, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, I need a, I need a hole to drink. Yeah, that, that's. <laughs> 
The only thing about the mask thing is like, well, all right, I, if I go out to eat or drink, it's kind of a moot point. I mean, I get the grocery store thing and the pharmacy to, to a certain extent, but yeah, to go to a bar, uh, I'm bending the elbows, kid. I ain't got time for a mask. Uh, we ain't got time for a mask. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. So, would you go to a concert now? Uh, if, if it was something I really wanted to see, yeah. All probably. right, all right. Um, sporting event, same thing. Um, I don't know. I, maybe I need to wait and then let people put their foot in the water first, and then I'd be uh, right behind them once I see if it's okay. The, yeah. The water's okay, you know? That's what I got a feeling we kind of have going on right now is a big game of chicken with a lot of these states. No one wants to be the first guy, especially if it doesn't work. So we're like, well, you go for it. Well, you and then they don't want to get sued, you yeah. know? So, yeah. I agree. Yes. Um, so how long do you think it'll take before we get back to normal? When when do you think the first time you're just, you're going to look up and your bar's full and you're just like, shit, we're busy again. Shit, where are these people come from? Where? When do you uh, think that happens? Man. I hate to say this, but <laughs> the way things are crawling, another year from now. Really? I hate to say that, but. See, I, I've told people this, and it's just my opinion. I remember 9-11. Yeah, yeah that's what I wanted to get to. And. Uh, this is life changing. This is. Yeah. But I remember 9-11 and like, well, all right, no one will ever get on the plane again. You can't go anywhere. We're, we're all just frying to death or whatever. Um, yeah, things were slow for a few months, but people still went to the bar the next day, you know. Uh, I, I yeah, was... this is worldwide, man. I mean, I mean... Yeah, but I mean, we terrorists. Um, Al-Qaeda was going to kill us all, all to death. 180-something Murder and kill us. They, I mean, uh, planes from everywhere. Um, we're, you know, we're talking about... I hope, I hope I'm you know, wrong. virus here, yeah. I hope I'm wrong. I, I just, I mean... I well, then that 9 11, no one was cooped inside. Yeah, a lot of people might not travel. They didn't spend as much, but they could still go to the local restaurant. They Absolutely. They still knocked one back. They still got to go to their job. Yeah. I mean, this is this is off the hook. I was, uh, at, at the time of 9 11, I'll never forget, I was managing uh, Starbucks. And we shut down halfway through that day, but I had people coming to me while we were closing. They're like, You guys closing? Well, I got shit to buy. I'm like, You know what's going on? Well, well well, thing called uh, terror going on right now. People did not want to even quit shopping then, and we were open the next day, and everything. I mean, we weren't as busy, and obviously, you know, the conversation of the day was was this. But I got, I get the feeling that this thing is just going on so long now that there's a lot of pent pent up demand, I guess. And when people get out, they're gonna they're gonna be ready rage, to go. Rage. Yeah, yeah, rage. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm, like I said, I just hope so. I hope sooner than later. And uh, keep my fingers crossed. But I think this is where our state is just going so slow with our governor. And so. Yeah, no, no, no. It is definitely frustrating Nevada situation. Um, I think Vegas opens up. You guys are going to be insanely busy. I People hope so. Up Thank for too you. much. Yes, I, I agree. People... People are wanting, going to get out. Now, I think, well, for one thing, and I was telling this to a buddy of mine, this is before they delayed the World Series of Poker. A buddy of mine was like, well, is anybody going to come out for them? Like, do you know your average poker player? They got, they got, they got to have action. They're ready to gamble. And I got to, you know, think about the guys, the hardcore sports bettors that haven't had any sports to bet on, haven't been able to go to that horse book and bet ponies at Del Mar. I got a feeling those guys are going to be ready to go. Now, I got a feeling the first day they open the casino's doors, they're going to be surprised in the number of people that walk in. Yeah, but a lot of people lost their jobs. And so the income that they had, that some of it expendable to, put, to use on gambling and betting, ain't there. So what are they, you know, how are they going to go gamble? Well, yeah, they're, yes they're... and no, though. There, there are a percentage of gamblers out there that... Oh, I don't yeah. want to say independently wealthy or whatever, just had money yeah, or, or they were retired and was kind of just blowing through their pension or whatever. 
And I, I don't think they're going to just let go of that action because, like, oh, maybe I need to be more responsible right now. No, I don't mm-hmm. see that. I yeah. see people that just have money and, and yeah. they're, expen- they're expendable money that they have. They're not going to be have it because they haven't. Yeah. They've been on unemployment or yeah. lost their job. No, I think I think you're middle of the road gambler, definitely. But you know, you know, in a casino, there's five, ten percent of whatever is hardcore gamblers, and they're going to gamble or they're going to gamble. They just gamble. That's what they are. They're gamblers. And those folks are going to be back day one, and they're going to be there each. You know, um, that's an interesting one. The poker players, you know, because the tables are all together, and the thing is, you need multiple players. It's not like blackjack. Um, I don't know if you've heard this or not. One of the theories thrown out, I'd seen this on CNBC, is that the casinos know it's going to be a slow open, know that they're not going to be able to fill up with conventions or shows and stuff. What they're going to focus on is the high-end gambler. Let's be honest, if Mr. Big comes in and drops, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollars, that's way more important having that guy than 10, 15 generic tourist in there. Um... With, like, Blackjack, Mr. Big has his own table. You're not worried about anybody else, you know, the stool. Uh, Mr. Big can have his own slot machine, high limits, you know, craps water. Poker, even the big players, well, I need another, at least one or two other people in there before that even works. You know, yeah, I guess if you're Doyle Brunson, those guys can play big heads-up matches, but they generally don't like that. They want more uh, customers. Action. Action. And, live action. Live action. Woo. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, thoughts? When I don't know, brother. Uh, I'm just waiting and seeing. I hope the gentleman is just sending the, that we go back to work is correct. Yes, I'm, uh, yes. No, I, I hope so, too. That we'll be busy. Um, What, uh, do you have any sage words of advice for our unemployed brothers and sisters in the bartending world? <laughs> <laughs> practice, practice. No, I mean, <laughs> we're losing the touch there. You know, you're not, uh, you're not playing the game. Uh, no, but I mean, as far as what we're going to do when we go back or what, what to do. No, I don't, we, well, you, we go you, when we go. You brought up something good. I was already becoming a bad bartender before we shut down. Why? Now, well, I just I got lazy. Uh, I, I work in a bar that's fairly slow, and I'll just leave it at that. Fairly slow. I might. There's literally some days I might make eight or ten drinks in an eight-hour shift. <laughs> but you might make. I don't know. The IRS don't need to know that. Anyway, <laughs> I only make a few drinks in the shift sometimes. And, and I've gotten, to be honest, lazy. I'm not, not the bartender I was eight to ten years ago. Just because I just don't. It's off. Besides that, oh, I bet I'm terrible. I bet I don't even know how to pour a Budweiser anymore. <laughs> uh, second nature. Yeah, pop with your left hand. It's, it's a nature. technique I got. It's a technique I got. No, everybody will be all right. They just need to get back behind the stick. Yes, yes. And start making that money and feeling good and taking care of the people i mean that's what i miss i miss the people man i mean from all over the world and you know that we get because we're in vegas yeah and a lot of our we have regulars you got regulars i got regulars i mean we miss those folks and want to touch base and you know be with be with them and yeah just have a good time no i tell you someone asked earlier if we like living in vegas or one one of the great parts about bartending on the strip is just the silly stuff you see. I mean, we're constantly entertained by our guests. And yeah, that is definitely a, a part I miss. Um, again, because what we part of what we do in Vegas is people come out here and just let themselves go. That's alcoholic And, and we're, uh, we're <laughs> kind of providing, you know, a little bit to that. Well, as I like to say, you know, I'm an adult, I'm a adult Santa Claus. You know, I like to spread a little happiness, give, give the gift of uh, booze out, you know, Sprinkle the infield. Sprinkle the infield, yes, yes. Uh, so, um, you know, I, yeah, I was asking you what advice you give to other bartenders, uh, something we discussed about before we went on the air. I, I hope, well, I hope everybody, but specifically my bartending brothers and sisters, utilize this time 
developing skills, either with your job or if you're tired of the job, go find something else. Don't don't do this for money. Well, I mean, we are we're all working for money, but what I'm saying is, if you don't like it, you know, take this time, move on to something else. But if you're a bartender, if you're a lifer like we are, work on your skills right now. You know, work work on your spirit knowledge, beer knowledge, what have you. Uh, also, I, I would uh, take some time now to learn about money. Uh, something I've tried to talk to younger bartenders in the past about is handle your money. One thing about what we do is we've always got cash on hand. It's easy to live a certain kind of lifestyle. And Lord knows I've lived it. And Jimmy, I'm sure he'll uh, concur. Yeah. But uh, you will get older like us, too, on these days. And you just you need to be smart with your money. And this should be a wake-up call on just being smart with your money. Um, learn about investing, even though you might not have money, obviously, right now to invest. But I would definitely take time, you know, get you a book, go online, read about it. Um, uh, maybe, maybe somewhere down the line I do. How's the virus affecting you over there? Uh, well, specifically in the state of Nevada... Uh, yeah, the, num people. The, the numbers aren't big. I think 5,000 cases and a little over 200, 200 deaths, 220 deaths. But a lot of people, we haven't been tested that heavily. No. And one of the big things, one of the big things too, and I'm glad you brought that up, is can't get anybody test. The reality is a lot of people may have caught this already. You know, to be honest, I, I don't doubt that the that Las Vegas has kind of already gone through this because we had Chinese New Year. Yeah. And at the end of January, I got real sick. I'd had some vacation time. I had a doctor's appointment, and I got real sick after I'd gone to the doctor's office. Well, I don't have to explain to you what your average doctor's office waiting room looks like as far as potential infection. So I was in a Petri dish when I went to the doctor back in January, and again, that was during Chinese New Year's. And we get a ton and tons of people from China uh, come over during that time. So I, there's a chance I might have already caught it and gone through this. But unfortunately, the way they're doing the testing out here, and I've, I checked into it, I can't test it for the antibody because I'm not sick now and I have no symptoms. I can't, they're not going to want to hear, well, I might have been sick two months ago. Can I get checked? They won't do it. Yeah, but if you have the ability to give that plasma that they're talking about that helps yeah. these people out there they should test you because you said you might believe you've had it and if you have had it yeah and now you can donate your plasma and who knows you could save several people's lives maybe yeah but they but from what i gather just to qualify for that testing i don't qualify that's where it's bullshit mm, yeah but uh but anyway yeah that uh you know, like I said, the antibody testing, I think that would help us out. But like I said, uh, you'd ask, you know, how we're doing in Vegas. We're all just bored. This whole thing sketchy. Well, don't get me started. I drink, I drink enough as it is. Um, I'll drink to that. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll drink to that. Uh, I do want to say I understand people's fears. Um, we've been pelted. Excuse me. Like, <laughs> yes, I yes. Refill. refill, yes. Well, the kid, the kid's an athlete. I mean, you can look at him and tell. Uh, I'm, any, a I'm a natural. Yes. Anyway, I totally understand why people are scared or nervous about it. I mean, we've been just totally pelted in the media about this whole deal. And again, the numbers, you know, when you think about X thousand dead, X million cases, I get it. I, I totally understand. I think, I think we need to find some kind of uh, balance here. Uh, but again, the, the oh. effect on Vegas, we're just not open. It doesn't look like we're opening anytime soon. Our governor don't want to open anytime soon. Um, we got a lot of people out here with a lot of free time on their hands that can't go to the bars and stuff. We're kind of used to all that stuff. So, uh, but we're hanging in there. We'll get there eventually. Feeling better now. There you go. Yes, definitely feeling better. Um, what do you think about <sighs> sports? Let's let's. How about the red flag laws here? Red flag laws? You know why he's talking about red flag laws? No, I don't. I do not. I'm afraid I don't know about red flag laws. I think I've we heard the term, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I, uh, uh, 
Oh, unless you're uh, referring to the gun. I wonder if that's what this is, the gun thing. I don't know. I think your buddy Sislak, when he first came governor, I don't know enough about the topic. Not, not, not trying to chicken out, but I really don't know enough about the topic to properly articulate about it. Uh, Nevada, if you're not aware, is a huge gun state, guns rights state. Gun laws, Virginia and Georgia. Oh, yeah, yeah, getting hit hard with. Yeah, gun laws. Uh, yeah, I remember our governor doing something when he first came in. He's gotten a lot of pushback. Um, actually, oddly enough, he got enough pushback on that people had started a petition to get him recalled. And now then this broke out. And actually, there's a lot of traction now uh, to get him recalled between the gun thing and now this shutdown, this extended shutdown, his reluctance to reopen. There's actually now a push and a petition to get him uh, recalled. So that's that's going on right now. So yeah, there we need our guns. Yeah, they love their guns out here. Uh, Nevada is a gun crazy state. If you're been on the strip, there's no gun ranges or anything, but just off the strip are a ton of gun ranges. If you're a gun guy, come out here, check out one of these gun ranges. Uh, Battlefield Vegas. You know, they take you out in the desert and let you shoot one of them big saw guns or an old school Gatling gun or whatever. Fly on a helicopter and shoot. Fly on a helicopter and shoot up stuff. Oh, yeah, I don't know. You want to get your gun on. Vegas is the is the place to be. Definitely, definitely. Well, I went to Oklahoma about six months ago. And, man, do they have guns. Yeah, they love guns in Oklahoma. And you're a Texas guy. Yeah. So they love their guns in most of the southern states. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. they yeah. love they love their guns down there. So so uh, sports. What do you think's gonna happen with sports? They keep telling us that something's gonna happen. If it's gonna happen, it looks like they're talking that there's gonna be no fans. I don't see how that works. The only thing, you know what? I've gone back and forth on the fan thing. Because it does suck. I mean, there should be fans. I guarantee the athletes will probably be like, wait a minute, I'm kind of used to the fans or whatever. That being said, though, I understand why the leagues might would sign up for doing games without fans because they have big TV contracts. Also, we need sports Local betting. Local TV, yeah. I'm, t- I'm telling you, I don't... I don't I'm, I'm, UFC July, I wonder how that will go. That's going in Florida. Yeah, and, uh, it, it sounds like Florida is going to be UFC's home for a while. Like I said, I our governor's in no mood to hurry. But, you know, down there, they've named it essential, like pro wrestling. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so Florida signed off on the UFC and I just, I don't have, I just don't think our governor's going to sign off. On well, I don't know if you heard July, which is normally the big show every year. UFC. I'm, I'm thinking that's what you're referencing. Dana White said today that they're gonna have a an island, a, a, a UFC island, to where the uh, the because there's so many fighters that are not from this country mm-hmm. that they can't get in the, here. So they're going to be able to fly him to some island. Like Bimini or something like somewhere. that? Somewhere. And, and he was talking about it today on ESPN. And, and uh, I went, whoa. So or wherever they're from. They should just go, sir. They should just go to like one of the islands off the Philippines or Taiwan or something. Something like that. And just had the Kumite from like, what was it, Blood Sports or whatever. Nasu Kao. Nasu Kao. Or whatever. Whatever that Jean Claude Van Damme movie was, just yeah, just go full blood sport. Just do, well, yeah, have I it. Mean, or what was the island Bruce Lee in Enter the Dragon, Mr. Hands Island? Or let's just go. Uh, see, see, this is where someone should take advantage of this situation and just go full silliness on something like that. And yeah, just get find that old castle of Enter the Dragon. You remember they they would fight out in the yard and Mr. Hahn would sit in his throne. Have Dana sit in his throne and just have these fights out in the yard. Wouldn't that be great? Like, like Rome. Yes. <laughs> and pay-per-view it. Win in Rome. Yes. <laughs> pay-per-view it and open up my local bar so I can go watch this with the other <laughs> and then savages. We'll and bring in the Tigers. And we'll bet. Let Caesar we'll bring in the Tigers. Bring in the Tiger. Losers. <laughs> 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 Don't don't get that Tiger King guy though involved. Yeah. Don't get 
No, get what, him. What was it when uh, uh, a movie where uh, the winner <laughs> winner gets a Cadillac, loser gets says you're fired. <laughs> uh, winner gets a Cadillac. A uh, Baldwin. Uh, God, Alec Baldwin. Oh man, this is an old movie with uh, Jack Lemmon and. Uh, Jack Lemmon. Oh my goodness! Maybe somebody can help me here. Yeah. Um, who else is in it? Pacino. Al Pacino, Jack Lemmon, and Alan Baldwin in oh, a movie. Oh. It's a, cl- a classic old movie about sales. The. Oh, you're not talking about Glenn Gary, Glenn, Glenn Ross. Ross. That's oh. It. Uh, oh. Okay. Glenn Gary. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I agree. Thank you. That was it, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. That was a good movie. Well, didn't he say that if, if you... I know Coffee's for Closers. Coffee's for Closers. Coffee's for Closers. Uh, the winner... Or... Oh, yeah, the sales competition. Winner gets a Cadillac, <laughs> the other guy forks or... Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, steak yeah. knife. Steak knife, yeah. Because yeah. our winner gets a steak knife, loser, you're fired. Yeah. Something like that. No coffee and Coffee's for Closers. And coffee's for Closers, yeah. Well, guess this is beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Um. So yeah, sports. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm really stunned on the sports thing. In all honesty, I'll always be closing you. Damn right. Uh, <laughs> ABC. The thing with sports, I'm really surprised about is the horse racing. How they've not opened up. You know, just if you think about a horse race, the jockeys really don't need to be together. Yeah, technically, I guess when they're racing, they're close, but they're not really, really closer. And. If you if you've gone to a racetrack lately, they're not crowded normally anyway. And again, most of the parametrial bidding's done other places, not necessarily on track. So you could run races at Del Mar and have people, you know, uh, socially dis- distancing, no problem. And then the casinos here in town with their sports betting apps, however, you know, can let you bet Caesars app, Stations app, however, and you can bet the horse races and. You know, the casinos get to make a little bit of money. The horse track gets to make money. Jockeys get to make money. Um, Did they do away with the dogs, the, the greyhounds in Florida? Don't know. I haven't heard that. Maybe I mean, somebody can help us out there. Dogs in Florida? I hope it's, not. No, I mean, the I love watching dog. I love watching the dog races. I mean. I, I've always said they should put monkeys on them dogs, like little jockeys. Oh, well. Would you not love that? People would... <laughs> People's head would explode. Little jockey, well, well, jockeys on them on them dogs. It, it would be bigger than horse racing. I'm, I'm telling you that. That might be. Yeah. We, might, we, we might have our second uh, job. Uh, yeah. Oh, I don't know if I can ride a ride a dog, but no, I can ride a camel. Yeah, yeah. A, an ostrich. <laughs> Those guys little riding. little funny story. Everybody did kick of this. When I was a lot younger man, or my father, I grew up on a ranch. My father, for a while, raised ostriches. Was going to so somehow in the early mid nineties, ostrich meat was going to be the next big thing. Yes, the, I remember that. Yes, I think Chili's had ostrich burgers for a while, something like that. Yeah. So my father Back wanted when. to start raising ostriches. And I remember helping him out with them. Meanest animal. You know, I, I'll get a pen with a two thousand pound bull any day. We won't think twice about it. But them ostriches, holy cow. Kick like a mule. Holy cow. Mean as shit. Uh, Liberty Mutual. And the Austrian emu. Yeah. All right. You'd got a big dissertation from my father confusing an emu and an ostrich. Oh, there's, there's a, big, a difference. Big, huge difference. That's huge not difference. a that's not a ostrich? No, no, it's an emu. <laughs> yeah, it's see now you now you're well, learning stuff. I know I got some ostrich boots. <laughs> wow. Come on. Well, I wish I had your money. Jeez, <laughs> ostrich boots. Well, I ran a Western Wear store back in for a while. Wait, well, just when you think <laughs> you know a guy. Huh? They fell off the truck. <laughs> <laughs> now we know why cameras are in the, the casinos. Uh, I didn't punch that doggy. Uh, uh. <laughs> so, um, what else going on? Um, Buffets. That's been a big topic of discussion. They may be gone. Buffets for the gone. Time I, being. I don't, man. I don't. I don't get that. 
I just, well, I mean, I, again, I understand there's been so much hype and everybody's afraid of everything now. That, but that extent, was but the first thing, if you remember, yeah. uh, we shut down at Bellagio. It was our buffet. The first thing they shut was the buffet. They told Celso uh, they were closing, and um, I couldn't believe it. But I guess they don't want people touching tongs and sneezing on salads. Yeah, and, but, I mean, then you just, you know, have... I get it, you got to spend more money, have somebody serve. Yeah. Serve you or whatever. Yeah. But... Yeah, just like to do the carved meats, yeah. I mean, Vegas is known. That's... Well, Vegas is known for... But, uh, my yeah, name, no, it's My just, name's Jimmy Buffet. I just... <laughs> I, there's just times where you... Especially in Vegas, let's be honest. Just in Vegas, you don't want to deal with the a la carte thing. You don't want to look at me. You're just... Man, you had a long night, whatever. You're hungry as shit. You know, you got a comp. You know, look, I got a free buffet. Cop. I want to murder this thing. I'm hungry as shit. You know, I'm hungry. Yeah, you had you used to take me over to Caesars every now and then. Yeah, Caesars, all that guy bought. Well, you know what, though? Caesars, I'm glad you said this. Caesars actually remodeling that buffet. Or not uh, remodeling, but cleaning it up and adding to it. But they're, I guess they're talking about keeping it open. They so, spent $17 million. I yeah, remember, they spent a lot of money on it. If you folks have never been to Vegas... Uh, one of the top buffets in town is Caesar. Now. It's called the, called the Bacchanal Buffet. Yeah, now, years ago. No, no, no. Yeah, now. The, I'd say Caesar's is the best. Yeah. Caesar's, when's the last time you've been in the Wind Buffet? I think I've been there once. Oh, God. I went about, God, maybe six months ago? Six, eight months ago. It was like last fall. Just bored one night. I'm like, I'm going to go to the Wind. Because I always love the Wind. That's, to, me, is, that, that's it, to me the nicest casino. It is now. beautiful in the Wind. And I wanted to go, and I got there, and none, all the restaurants were full. And one of the restaurants I wanted to go to, I was wearing shorts. I wanted to go to Sinatra's. Well, they wouldn't let me in with shorts. I'm like, ah, screw it, I'll go to the buffet. Holy cow, what a nice buffet. Just good. I can't remember. I went one. Really nice. Many years really ago. nice. I mean, it's not cheap. You're going to spend 50 bucks. Well, so is Caesars. Plus. Yeah, so Caesars. And, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, you're going to spend money, but. You can find a buffet that's. You know, but they had like quail legs <laughs> and shit like that. You're not finding that in a lot of places. I don't need that. Yeah, I don't need that. But I mean, what's the one uh, that OJ got popped at? Oh, at Cosmopolitan? No, OJ got arrested. Uh, at a buffet? No, no, at the station's casino. Oh, oh Palace Station. Yeah, Palace Station. Well, well that it's... buffet's nice now. So they they, well, they remodeled it. that hotel. Actually, and it's cheap. Oh no, no, reasonable. Actually, Palace Station. Was the first hotel I ever stayed at in Vegas. <laughs> first time I ever came to Vegas, twenty something years ago, or whatever. Stayed at Palace Station, and I've I've had great times there. That that's one of the hidden gems of Las Vegas, is Palace Station. It's a couple of blocks off the Strip. It's on the other side of the interstate, uh, on the north end of the Strip. It's called Palace Station. But I think they still run to this day shuttles to and from from the Strip, and it's. A, Reasonable rooms, uh, reasonable food and beverage. Yeah. You know, they got they remodeled. Good. It's clean, you know, not nice and clean now. I've just had a lot of They got of a great oyster, oyster bar in there. Oh, the oyster bar. If you folks... The clam it. chowder? Oh, I could eat a <laughs> gallon of this stuff. Holy cow. Tom, even Tom Brady would Tom, like that. Tom loves it, yes. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that's, thinks, a good, that's a good one uh, uh, for the money, yeah. you know. Uh, All right, let's talk about that real quick. First place is... When we open back up, even us locals, first places you want to head to when we open back up. Where are you, wanna, where are you going to? Where, well, I where's got, your first spot? Where you, you, know, you know. I know where your first spot, but I want you to tell the crowd. <laughs> oh, well, folks, I'm a fan. We have our off the strip little hidden gem that I call uh, Ellis Island. I don't call it that. They named it that. It's called Ellis Island, and it's right behind Bally's, one street behind it on Colvolt. So it's it's due due east of Bally's, and they make their own. They brew their own beer. Yes, own brewery inside. Yeah, uh, great root beer. Root beer. Oh my God! They brew their own root beer. That's unbelievable. And they have some fine eateries in there. If good I good barbecue. Say that. If you want barbecue on the strip, oh. tough to beat. Uh, they have a pizza joint, Metro Pizza. Metro garlic pizza. nuts. Oh, 
Oh, to die for. And the cafe, I mean, you want to get a prime rib. I think that one day I took you with it, I get the... The double, double cut, that thing was, that like, was like that thick. 40 ounces or something. Impressive. For like 30 bucks. And also, one caveat about Ellis Island, and this is important on your next trip to Vegas, uh, best karaoke on the Strip. Oh, yeah. On your strip. They got every, I mean, They got a great karaoke lounge, packed every night, everybody's having fun, they've got a book that thick of songs, there's, there's something you want to sing, they got it. And it's a so, small casino. Small casino, just a block... Off the strip. That, that's where... Uh, Ellis Island. Yeah, Ellis Island. But uh, on the corner of Colville, there is where uh, Tupac got shot. Yes. Yes. And if you go a block <laughs> south from this casino, it was the corner, street corner, where Tupac got shot. You go down a block or so, you're behind MGM. That's where he was shot and you, did you know years that, ago. So you could, did, did you could you, pour one for your homie right there on that. Did you know that he... Uh, when he when the first cop got to him at the car, he was still alive, and they said, "Who shot you?" And he said, "F you." <laughs> True story. I'll be damned. <laughs> I, I was not there that night. I, I wasn't there because I didn't shoot nobody. But yeah. um, uh, that was told on a TV show, local uh, TV show here in Vegas. And the cop that went to the wind to the window, he said, "Who shot you?" And F you, <laughs> cop. <laughs> So, uh, Tupac. Well, so, my first spot, and I've, I've debated this, but yes. the other day, I drove by and I posted this on... Let me see if I know you. On, I'm gonna think, I'm gonna, all right, all right, I'll let you take it. No, no, I'm not going to I'm, No, I want you to say it. I'm, gonna, all I'm, right. I'm, I'm in my head. I'm, uh, I was driving around the other day. There's a great little <clears> hidden gym here in town called Frank's Tiki Lounge. Oh, you ever been to Frank's? I have, once. Strongest drinks in town. It's called Frank's Tiki Lounge. It's a little northwest of the Strip. It's It's kind of... It's kind of in what I call kind of a dead man zone between the Strip and downtown. There's like a three mile or so segment that's not the safest neighborhood. You're not walking through that area, or you generally don't want to be walking through that area. And it's a couple blocks west of Las Vegas Boulevard, so it's kind of off the beaten path. But it's called Frank's Tiki Lounge. Every cabbie and Uber driver or knows how to get there. Stiffest drinks in town. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm getting nosebleed from the drinks. Mai Tai, zombies, stuff like that. And the way they rank their rate their drinks by skulls like they have a couple of drinks that are five skull and one one you're drinking one you can try that second one but you ain't finishing it it's it's ten and that's coming from a, a it, professional like me uh, five times a long island iced tea huh? oh god it's it's those drinks because part of the deal is in the back behind the bar is they have the cheapest rot gut overproof 151 rum and they top everything with that so oh. you might have some Bacardi and some Myers and some this, that, and the other, and you might have a little orange carousel and all that, and then they just float the shit out of this rot gut 151, and you're Not just... even Bacardi? <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's not. <laughs> Uber. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, do Uber. Yeah, don't, don't go to Frank's. Don't drive to Frank's. It, it's pointless. It's pointless. Take a cab, take an Uber. But Frank's Tiki Lounge, it's kind of... Now, now, the unfortunate part about Frank's is it's one of the few places in town what? that doesn't have food. It just There's game at the bar or whatever, but there's no food there. Mm. I'm 99% sure there's no food there. So you're kind of like, well, shit, I'm getting drunk, but I can't. Well, then what about another place that you might that might have some food that uh, would be a right. second choice? Second choice. That's your, like, little hideaway. Because you come up right. with some good ones. Oh, well, I get around. I get around. <laughs> um... You know where I'm in the mood for it now? And again, it's another local joint, but it's not, it's actually, technically it's on the strip, but it's way south. Bootlegger. You ever been to Bootlegger? You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? So about four miles, three, four miles south, well, it's by the outlet malls, you know, south of the strip. Oh, I did see it. I've never been in. Bootlegger is kind of a local, uh, local legend. It's an Italian restaurant. Uh, the current location, they've only been there about 15 or so years, 15, 20 years. But the restaurant's history dates back, I think, all the way to the 40s. And inside, they have some old photos of whatever. But it's classic old-school Vegas, classic old-school Italian joint. They have they have a little lobby or foyer area, and then they have the main dining room. But then they have a, off to the side, they have a separate lounge-slash-gaming area, and that's open 24 hours. Good morning, you guys. Hope things are better soon for Las Vegas bartenders. Joe Constantine! Joe! Joe, my man, good to see you. <laughs>
Uh, experiment rhino or sapphires? You can't go wrong with either. Gosh, you can't you can't go wrong with either. I'll say this, this is the way it's always been explained to me, and you, you correct me if I'm wrong on the <laughs> sapphire experiment rhino thing. Right. Sapphires is the largest strip club in the US and it's disproportionately the largest thing we got out here. Uh, rhino supposedly has the highest quality girls. What let's uh, get your feedback on that. Um I don't really go that that often uh, there's yeah. there you know the old one down by Jerry's Nugget uh, pa uh, Palomino oh yeah that's the original mafia one that, and yeah. you know but well glitter gulch to totally naked no booze though yes no booze you, if you go there B -Y -O -B. you better, better slide it in your boot a little BYOB <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story about that. There's a joint. I don't know if it's... I, I think it's already closed, but if not, it's not surviving this outbreak. There's a, There was a place not too far behind the Venetian on the Industrial. It was called um, Can Can Room. I came out here for a Roy Jones Jr. fight back in like 2002, 2003, something like that. We went there afterwards. Somebody told us to go to this strip club. And it was it was all new joint, and they told us, what's well, BYOB? Well, there's a convenience store right literally 100 feet from this. So we went and got like a case of beer. We're going in, and they're like, oh, no, you can't take it in. What do you mean you can't take it? Well, BYOB, right? Well, yeah, but uh, you can't bring it in. <laughs> what? That's the most fucked up. You know, if you guys aren't selling, there should be no problem with us bringing it in or whatever. So we had to leave our beer outside. We watched the girls for a living, and then we'd go back outside. Well, this place is so bad. The girls are so terrible <laughs> that me... And one of the other guys, we had a group of about seven or eight of us. So me and another guy, just, we just hung outside and drunk beer out front. And we're larger guys. So I remember everybody would come up and start handing us IDs. So we, so we just act like we're door guys. And, I, I, I and we get a bunch of Marines to come in. And they're, they're starting out like, you boys don't make me come in here and start, you boys better not start no trouble. You, know, you guys have a good time. And shit like that. We sat outside. It was Hell such a you, terrible strip club. We didn't even... You probably get a valet a few cars. And oh, yeah, off yeah. No, there's uh, little darlings, I'm told, by Raymond. My first was Olympic Garden. Look, Tosh, you'll appreciate this. I don't know if you know this little fact. If you go to Olympic Garden, Olympic Garden has gaming machines inside. They have video poker. By law, they, they're not supposed to charge a cover. No, most tourists don't know that, however. There's gaming inside a place... You can't keep the public out, and you can't charge a cover. That's like the Mirage can't charge a cover to come in the casino water. So if you go to Olympic Gardens, tell them you're going to play video poker, and they have to let you inside, no cover. You pay no cover. I didn't know. I mean, throw, you, can go in, you can go in and throw like a 10 or whatever, $5, $10 bill in the, in the video poker machine and save your cover, and they can't do nothing about it because by law they got to let you in. Little trick, but you didn't know that. Did I you? did not know yes. that. So, but Olympic Garden, I think there's one or two strip clubs here in town that have gaming. And if if you find a strip club that has gaming, by law they have to let you in without cover because you might go play that machine. So just remember that little fact. That's a good yeah. tip. That's a damn real good quick. Tip. I just want to say hi again, to Joe Constantine, man. Joe, has been, hope everything's we'll, we'll going good. You, yeah, you're yeah. one of my guys. I hope you're growing a beard like me and. Uh, <laughs> I hope you're not sweating over Ben Roethlisberger too much. Let's just. Do it. It's over, Joe. Just let it go. Hey, yeah. Joe. Trust me though. You still get. You still have some of your fans come in and ask for it. That oh yeah. Good. No, no, no. You're still. He, he was a celebrity, Joe. Joe, Joe was definitely a celebrity. He had his own. Uh, yes. Piece. Yes. Good man, Joe. So, uh, all right, we talked about first bar you want to go to. First restaurant. When we open back up. Man. Um, I need some good barbecue. All um, right. I don't know. Just Ellis Island again? or I Have mean, you hit the Rolling Smoke? You know, the place? Yes. That, yeah. How is that? No. No. I don't like it. What do you think about that joint we hit with Maddie that one day that had the... Yeah, oh, I got, hold on, I, got a, I think I have a menu. All right, here he goes. Oh. Uh, actually, I don't remember the name of the place, but there's a great little place a few blocks west of the Strip. Is that it? Oh. Isn't that it? Yeah, Jesse Ray's. <laughs> Jesse Ray's Barbecue. <laughs> Wait a minute, does it say something about the fortress? I don't know. You need a beer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll take a beer. Uh, fort, or anyway, yeah, Jesse Ray's. 
great little barbecue joint. What they do as an appetizer, you'll love this. They take a rack of ribs and wrap it to where it looks like a little fort, and inside there's pulled pork, brisket, tater tots, cheese. <sighs> to <laughs> die for. Jesse Ray's barbecue yeah. joint. You can't go wrong. Uh, Glitter Gulch during the day has to be the worst girls in Vegas. Unfortunately, Chris, nope. no moss. <laughs> no moss, Glitter Gulch. They uh, tore that down. Actually, I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, that location uh, where Glitter Gulch was at, remember, it used to be by the old Vegas club. That whole block got torn down, and they are building a new casino called Circa that should be done by the end of the year. I yeah. drove... I drove down downtown not too long ago, and it uh, it was looking good. It was looking like they're getting close to capping the building, and uh, they're shooting. I, I believe they're shooting for the end of the year to open up. Uh, but Glitter Gulch, I'll tell you a funny story. I wish you would have been there for what. So every year, and if you if you're a follower to the channel, you know every year I do something called the Santa Rampage. Jimmy, well come, I do it too. Jimmy comes along. We've got him on board lately, but they do something called the Santa Rampage. It's two, three, four hundred drunk guys in a Santa suit and drunk uh, ladies in various outfits uh, just go up and down downtown get all liquored up just raging in different bars yeah. every hour and Santa pub crawl yeah. well years ago before you start with us the second stop every year was always Glitter Gulch guys who didn't have their girlfriend weren't married or whatever would split off about 100 150 of us would split off and go to Glitter Gulch Oh, Each year. All the Santas? All the Santas. You, the sight of about 100 drunk Santas inside Glitter Gulch just <laughs> making it rain was pretty funny. Let's, you, let's just say I've had some good times that joint. You said, the, or somebody said the worst one was, was what? Glitter Gulch? Well, no, no, no. I was saying the Can Can Room. Oh. Or actually the one, the worst one. No, right here. Chico Benita or something. Chico Benita. Oh. Now you... They, they, it's so bad there that you can go underground and make it to Mexico. <laughs> oh, gee. I'll tell you one, uh, I've always heard that was worse was Larry's Villa. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Larry's Villa, it's up by like Jerry's Nugget or whatever. That's where Chico, I don't even know how yeah, to yeah, say it. Chico's, Chico Benito, yeah. Chico Benito. No, I've had several of my bar pours and uh, stuff tell me like, oh, like that. Oh, that's joint. brutal. I mean, they got some... You know, two socks full of wet sand, uh, well, I'd, let scars me, all over. Well, let uh, me tell you about Larry's Villa. <laughs> Funny story about Larry's Villa. Oh. Uh, not to get too far off on strip clubs, but... So, a ball roommate and his buddy went there one night at like 2, 3 in the morning. And they had a few beers. Going on, and a dancer comes over. And I guess across the street was Jack in the Box. And a dancer told my buddy and his friend... You boys go get me a combo meal from Jack in the Box. I'll give you guys free lap dance. Just look for it. And he told me she looks over up. He's like, nah, no thanks. The $5 fucking value meal was not still one worth it for him. Larry's Villa. Yep. No, that Larry's Villa. No, I've heard that. I've heard that joint for a long time probably took the prize for worst strip club in Vegas. Uh, so, uh, but, all right. Well, uh, I never heard of it, but this yeah. one, uh, there's a lot of people who swear by that. Yeah. Chico Benitez. Yeah. And it's still, it's still open for you boys, the boys that want to venture into the. Uh, you know, that's a good. That's I haven't thought about this angle yet, but how? Yeah, what's going to happen when the strip clubs open back up? That you just asked like about. You asked about sports. That's good enough to know yeah. what, what's going to happen to strip clubs. Yeah. Um, are they going to have? Plastic over there. Yeah, no more lab dances. You just gotta watch the girls from the stage, kind of thing. Oh, the girls gotta hate that. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, the interaction with the men is how they make their money. That's got. <laughs> that's gonna have to kill. You know what? I wonder what them girls are doing right now for money. Uh, if you think about it, unlike me, and you think about a bartender, I can't outsource my bartending. I can't do it from home. I can't remote bartend or whatever. But those young ladies, they're. They're Probably. going. No, they're doing it on video. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're they dancing have... on video. They're doing their own little shows. Perversion on yes. the internet. So, yeah, they're far, or some are escorting. Wink, wink. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like off track betting, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
Boy, that's a, you know what, it's another one. What about the whorehouses out here? I haven't heard their status. For those of you that may or may not know, here in Nevada, prostitution is legal in the state. It's not legal in Clark County where Las Vegas is, but the rest of the state it is. Actually, the closest legal brothel, and again, it is legal, is about 45 minutes west of Vegas in a town called Pahrump. They're in a separate county, separate jurisdiction. Um, there's, I want to say there's 19 or 20. At one time, I want to say there's like 29 legal brothels, but there's only about 20 of them now. <coughs> uh, but yeah, I haven't heard their status. Well, no love without the glove, for sure. Well, for sure, for sure. But uh, think about it, though, those girls, are, I, I think every two weeks, get some kind of medical exam or uh, they probably practice more hygiene than a lot of other professions, I, I, hey. I dare say. Costa Rica, the, the uh, <laughs> Hotel Del Rey, any of you people that have been there, Hotel Del Rey. This is not officially sanctioned by the Planet Arch Channel. The Blue, right? the Blue Marlin Bar, over 100 girls. Are there topless food deliveries? Huh. huh. I wonder about that. San Jose. Yeah. Flying to San and uh, Key Largo. The Key Largo. And for all you crazy people, uh, God, what was the name of the other bar down the st on the street in San Jose? Uh, oh, my memory's gone. Mm. But uh, Hotel Del Rey Blue Marlin Bar. Did anybody. Go check it out. It's uh, they their the girls are checked. Uh, they're they're checked. Uh, they have they have their drug. I mean their health card. Yeah, yeah. They have to have uh, all kinds of tests, and uh, I've been thrown out. Yes, Tosh, this has taken a turn. We were really focused on uh, the Las Vegas Strip and bartending, but uh, well, that was the whole point. Have a couple beers. Uh, gonna see where this goes. Uh, just like I said, wanted, wanted to kind of, you know, give people a little vibe out here in Vegas and what's going on. Uh, again, we're actually not really hit hard by this virus, as, as crazy as that may sound. Um, we're just dying to get back open. Uh, we're locked up. The, I, th I think Vegas is a little different, too. Um, other places, and, and I, you know, follow social media in other places and a lot of other jurisdictions. Obviously, if you're in, like, New York City or whatever, you're, you're in no mood to open anything back up. You know, it's obviously different situation out there. But Vegas, Vegas is a town about business. We all, you don't come to Vegas if you're not wanting to do business. Like, this is just not a place to bring 2.5 kids in a minivan, that kind of thing, or whatever. You kind of come out here to work. And to make money, and that's kind of what we want to do right now. And this whole thing was kind of built on that. We're not built in a harbor. We're not near any natural resources or anything like that. Uh, we're here to sling booze, gamble, you know, pay the bills. And I think that uh, that emotion right now. Um, again, a lot of people are are getting upset with our governor because he doesn't want to open the state. And again, we're here to pay bills. <laughs> you know. Uh, beer don't beer ain't free. Even though uh, if you follow my channel, I'll teach you how to make beer. They should follow that channel. Well, you can learn a lot of things on that thing. Yeah, yeah. You people from Texas. Dumb question: Do locals even think about going to Heart Attack Grill? Yes, uh, the locals have done. I uh, everybody has to go once. Yes. <laughs> no, no. Uh, 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 guy, I know uh, we went for his fortieth birthday or whatever. Uh, Hard Tech Grill is kind of a fun joint. Uh, I mean, there's not, once you get inside and kind of get the concept, I mean, it's kind of it, but part of the deal with the Hard Tech Grill, if you don't, for those of you that might not know what it is, it's a restaurant downtown um, that serves highly fattening food. There's no diet sodas or anything else. Um, they, they make you sign a waiver going because the food's fattening, it could hurt you. <laughs> Um, they make you, they also put you on a little hot hospital schmock or gown. You have a nurse serve you food or whatever. It's, it's, greasy, it's, a, it's, it's a, a greasy spoon. It's a greasy spoon. Now, I went there and had the chili dog, and I literally felt like I swallowed a brick. It was the heaviest <laughs> thing. Just, just weighed me down. Like, I've eaten a ton of chili dogs. I mean, you can look at me. You know, I know chili dogs. But this thing was just unbelievable. 
Coney but they Island have for Coney Island, the chili dog. Oh, right yeah. there. Yeah, you can't go wrong. But uh, Hardtack Grill, no, actually, fun time. Um, they they do the gag. Uh, like I said, there's no Diet Coke. They do the real Mexican Coke with real sugar in there. Uh, yeah. If you want a shot, they put it in like a little pill bottle. And then they weigh you, don't they weigh you? Well, they have a big it? scale outside. If you weigh 350 plus, supposedly you eat for free, you're going to free entree, something like that. <laughs> and everybody weighs. You can just weigh yourself on that scale up front. Uh, supposedly, if you don't finish your meal, they have a nurse in there with a paddle and smack you. If you don't finish your meal, it lights you yeah. up. Give yeah. you licks. That reminds me of getting that... Uh... So, uh, eat your food. What's Eat the, your beats. What, what's the German place over there? By Opera Harvard? House. They, them girls take advantage Ooh. of you when they smack. Speaking of smacking right. you. I'm glad he brings it up. Warning to you tourists. If oh. you go to Opera House. Opera Good House German is near food. the Hard Rock. Great little place. Great oh, great beers. I love and their band October and 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 Band and polka. You know, fun time. But they have a gal. They have <laughs> these gals that sell you Jaeger oh. shots. When you get a Jaeger shot, they give you a paddle. And you think, oh, what the hell? She's a cute little blonde. Or give me a anger. All right, yeah, hit me. With... Them girls will light your ass up. I, I mean, mean literally, they take everything. It out is your on it's you. your high school football coach giving you that lick. Think of it that way. You remember the, the licks your high school? I, it's I that. see it, and I don't think I think that they these women are out to hurt you. If if that woman was a man, there'd I, been a fist fight. Yeah. I'll, just, I'll just say that in the licks I've seen. It, it, it's just because, I mean, that when they hit you, it's going to leave a mark. For sure, for sure. Well, Jimmy, what do you want to tell the kids? You got anything you want to tell them before we uh, you know, wrap her up? It's been, uh, hey, brothers, I'm enjoying it. With, there you go. I don't know. Uh, does a wet dog wiggle? <laughs> wet dog, I'm not, I'm not sure. Of course they wiggle. I came up with that one. Yeah. <laughs> the happy hippie. Oh, I don't know if you already. Uh, well, we're just... Oh, real... Well, i tell you what, since you're stuck. So, part of me doing this, and I don't want to be full disclosure, I want to give my buddy Jimmy. I am contemplating somewhere down the line, maybe doing more... Uh, live feeds like this, you know, just talking about the state of Vegas. I know a lot of people are curious about that. Also, contemplating a podcast. So, any feedback you have, um, actually, I'm, I'm kind of interested or, where I'm thinking about this, and I'd love some feedback, is doing a podcast talking about the world of bartending. We, our lives are pretty interesting, especially if you're a Las Vegas bartender. Our lives, livelihood. I brewed some hard cider from one of your vids. Much appreciated. Hey, hopefully the hard cider works out. All right, but you talk some. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Let's do more live. This is fun. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, you know what I need to do live? Speaking of which, I probably need to brew a batch of beer one night. Maybe I'll invite you over. We'll just cook up a batch of beer, do it live like this while I'm cooking. Takes, uh, depending on the style of beer, whatever. I mean, if I do a kit, sometimes I can do 20, 30, or, you know, 30, 40 minutes. Uh, if I do a full, what's call a full boil, uh, now we're talking about like 90 minutes or so total for a brew. So maybe one night get together, we'll brew a beer, have a couple of beers, and I'll, I'll brew a beer and kind of talk, see the whole process. But, when I, but what I was thinking about with the podcast thing or more live streams, it's just, again, talking about the world of bartenders and our, our lives and some of the unique silly shit we hey we get to see and just our lives are kind of hard to explain in certain context like uh not to, not to sound too cocky but i'll say it like yeah. this it's like you know in other professions the the the, the cream of the crop whatever profession you know even if you're accountant you know people know you people appreciate it you know athletes whatever but bartenders how do you know? Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be cocky, but I'm, you know, toward the top of my profession. But we kind of live a unique life that only other bartenders can appreciate. Why would I, I'm thinking about doing a podcast where we kind of talk about that. Just, I like just that our life, idea. Our, our world. I like that, but just even, I mean, because it it's bartending all over, all over the world. That, and 
just stories from <laughs> this guy. I swear to God, <laughs> I swear to God, we could do three or four of these. We could just start bringing even, up people's name. You bring up a name, and we'll and maybe we can't some, even like. So we can do three of these, and I get through half the stories he has. He's been bartending longer than I have. I I started just real quick. I started my first bartending shift. I want to say it was spring in 1993. First drink I ever had was from a older gentleman bartender in Vegas. The Stardust. Good memories. Stardust. Wow. Great little memory. Great cheap foot long chili dog. $2.99. You go for your chili dog. This thing was just, it was, it was a beast. Chili dogs. I didn't know anything about that Stardust. You ever go to the old Stardust? Didn't they have a, a Tony Romas in there? No, 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 no. You're thinking... It starts with an S. Didn't, uh, uh, no, Stardust? No, it was, maybe it wouldn't start us. It was something else. And then you help it. Pla- okay. oh, sorry, sorry, Tosh, I missed that. We were talking about Tony Romas. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't remember Tony Romas in the Stardust. Now, you know... There oh, we're- shoot, we're getting low batteries. All right. Well, my phone's telling me, unfortunately... It's about time to wrap up. So that's that's it for tonight. Uh, we may do this again next week. Shit. Get together, have a beer, shoot the shit. Real quick, though, I do want to do this before. What? Hey, Platt, love your channel. Actually, make sure you answer this already. Oh, when's Vegas going to open back up? I'm Again, I'm afraid we don't know. Our, our governor says we're not ready for a phase one reopening. And... From what I read, he's thinking like casinos are like phase four of the whole deal. So it um, right as, now it's shooting. They're shooting for June first. But yeah, June first for most places. Post-bat. I know a couple post-bat. of casinos, Treasure Island, and and even like Caesars are contemplating May fifteenth. But I think you misunderstood. Oh, what was your biggest tip? Uh boy, I am uncomfortable with some of the. Well, I don't want to say I'm uncomfortable, uh, but it. Vegas, the tip thing is real random, and, and you know some people have made big tips. Or anyway, I'll tell you my I'll, I will tell you my biggest tip story. A wealthy gentleman that frequents where I come in was in one time, and the cocktail waitress that normally works the room she got mad that day for some reason, like I'm leaving and you can told me to take care of the tables. Well, Mr. Big was playing, but she still didn't want to be there, even though. He is known to be what's called George. It's a term we use for great tippers. Anyway, he orders two vodka sodas for me and gives me $1,500. A $1,000 yellow chip and a one uh, $500 purple Thank chip. Jesus. So, uh, yeah, that was, that was a pretty good day. Uh, that being said, um, I, to be honest, uh, to be honest, where I wor- where we were, or uh, the room I work in, whatever, um, that's on the low end of the scale. Actually, uh, I've known yeah, uh, a lot of. There's been a lot of uh, five figure tips in that room. In but, your room, I yes. worked one night by myself and late night, and I a Cuban. I mean, it was two hundred, three hundred, but, yeah. but twenty seven hundred bucks was the it turned up just from one guy. For me. Yeah, see, I, you that, know what? I, I hit, yeah. I'm more of a singles guy, and just in the world tip. I, I've not hit those five figures or whatever. Like I said, 1500 is my biggest. Uh, $100 at a time is kind of how I earn it. But anyway, that's my tip. Yeah, but story. these guys are gambling, they're playing blackjack, and they're winning. They're just chip, black chip, yeah, black yeah, chip, yep. whatever. I mean, some of the girls, they, you know, get cars and. Yeah, no, no, no. We uh, that uh, same bar. I remember year, years ago. I think before you started there. There's a young lady that had her mortgage paid off there. So yes. Yeah. All right. So real quick wrap up because again the battery's about to die. I want to ask you one quick question. A little mm-hmm. survey. Get everybody to think about. To wrap up. Best drinking song. Wow. Jesus. Best drinking song. Well, you should have gave me a head. Oh, no, no, no. I like this on the fly. Uh, David Allen Coe, I was drunk the day my mom got out of prison. You know what? You can't go wrong there. (laughs) You know what? I thought about this, and I have a ton. I don't know. Um, You ever heard the old uh, Red, I think it's Red Thompson or Six Pack to Go? 
No. That's a great tune. But I'm going to have to say, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, now you're, you're wimping out. You're being... Uh, Margaritaville. I... I've... I'm, I'm, a, just, I'm a Buffett fan. I'm, I'm a, into not a parrot too, head, but a Buffett fan. Yes. I've ended too many nights with that song um, and just worked at too many bars that play. And I, it just it takes me back to a certain time war or so. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, one bourbon, one scotch, one beer. You <laughs> damn right. That's a great tune. That's a great tune. And for, you know what? That song, though. That's one of those songs that if I'm in a bar and I've got some whiskey in me, that one gets me a little frisky. That one, all right. Uh, he sang another song, uh, if I believe, uh, I Drink Alone. Oh, yeah, well, George Thurgood, yeah. <laughs> is that who that is? Drunken Nights. Double or seven drunken nights. I probably don't know that one. Mm -hmm. um, George Strait used to have one years ago. When one of his first albums, he had one called 80 Proof Ball of Tear Stopper. Oh, what a great title, 80 Proof Ball of Tear Stopper. All right, kids. Seriously, I do need to wrap up. I hate to do this, but again, the battery's dying on me. I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, we might do this again next Wednesday. I will uh, let everybody know, Jimmy B's, why don't we get drunk and screw? Oh, you can't. It, the Jimmy B's catalog, I don't I don't think you can go wrong there. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we'll, we may try this again next Wednesday. Would love your feedback. Again, love your feedback on the podcast. And uh, until next time. Um, I just want to say Bottoms up. one more thing. All right. As old Casey Kasem would say, oh, yeah. keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching, reaching for, for the stars. stars.